Hello, hello, Libra. Welcome to your June 2019 overview reading. This is good for you if you are a sun, moon, or rising Libra. And hello, if you are new to my channel, it is such a pleasure to have you here. And before I lay out this spread, I want to let you guys know that I have launched a podcast that is available now. Check out the description box if you're interested in checking that out or if you want to know which decks I used for this spread, they are listed out in the description box as always. Now I am going to lay this out and then we will get started. All right, let's get into this Libra. So the first thing, as you guys know, we're going to start with the Oracle cards. So while I'm pulling these, go ahead and take a deep breath into the diaphragm. If there's some information you want to have come up this month, just make requests for that to come up and show itself during this reading. And one last Oracle card... Okay, so the truth bomb for Libra this month is your success will be in direct proportion to the quality of relationships in your life. So think about your level of success and how that's built is created through the connections that you have. So make sure that you are keeping your social circle really neat and tidy this month. That's what I'm getting. If you are building anything, it doesn't matter if you are making career connections. It doesn't matter if you're making friendships. It's all communal. And the people that you surround yourself with will have an influence of the connections and network that you build. So make sure you choose wisely this month. Now, the animal spirit, I had you guys vote for which uh, oracle deck to use on Instagram, and you guys chose this one. So we have Lion. Now, this is about self-confidence, pride, maybe a titch of ego that might be showing itself this month. I actually don't think that the ego is a bad thing. It's just about, you know, really keeping a close eye on it if you feel like it's inflating or if it's um, preventing you from taking taking a line to action. That's that's when you kind of want to check your ego and what exactly is it saying. But having confidence and pride in what you do, being proud of the work that you've put in is never a bad thing at all. You have absolutely earned it. So make sure that you um, focus on the quality of relationships in your life and hold people to the standard that you hold for yourself. The word of the month. Hunger, examine complacency and recommit to your passions. Take this opportunity to stretch yourself and find sustenance. New gusto and gifts await within the challenge at hand. How bad do you want it? And I really like that last one about the gifts um, are within the challenge at hand. That's a big part of this because you don't know your power until you face a challenge. So it's kind of, there's both, both are playing into that there. Now the central energy for Libra this month is the Knight of Wands. This is about progress, moving forward, taking action on the things that you want and going fast. So I think this month is going to be about you really using whatever fire you have within you and focusing on the activities that drive that fire and ignite that fire. So what makes you feel really expansive? What makes you feel like you want to take charge? What makes you feel like you can do it? I think that um, also keeping in mind what media are you digesting? What people do you have around you? Do you have a lot of naysayers? Do you have a lot of people who are encouraging you and uplifting you? Keep a close eye on what exactly you have in your vicinity. And that's going to paint a picture of what's being reflected back to you so that you can either alter it so it can bolster your progress and move you forward or it's something where it's affirming how much progress you are making if you're actively auditing what you have in your environment. 
what is shifting out for Libra is the Empress. So this is about focusing on the feminine. I think you're shifting into more of a masculine season this month. What I mean by that is we all we all play with the feminine masculine archetype and we go through different different seasons of yin and yang masculine feminine and so this is one of those times when I'm seeing a shift happen from where you were probably focusing on calling things in being receptive maybe being more gentle or soft or focusing on self-care I actually think this is about focusing on hunting a little bit more maybe pursuing a little bit more taking and those right steps, focusing on what lights that fire, what gets you hungry. And that's more of a masculine style of pursuit and manifestation. I think that you've really filled your tank and recharged your battery. Now, you're not going to want to overdo the masculine unless that's the primary energy that you run. If you're a little bit more um, confident running feminine energy, that's probably the... Uh, that's probably the standard or the baseline for you, but it's okay to play with the masculine as well, even if you are more uh, comfortable or confident with the feminine. The oncoming energy is the king of swords, so mastery of thought, mastery of mind, this is your king. I'm going to clarify this one, actually. I am quite curious what, what information is coming through here. Ten of Cups. So this is about you feeling really good about yourself. Okay, that, again, that confidence is really shining through. And so this is actually looking like doing hard things, challenging yourself, finding your strength through whatever challenges make an appearance is where you actually get the confidence to do bigger and better things. It's not in complacency. You don't find strength when things are easy. Strength comes like when, think about exercising, when you do those last two reps, that's where where the strength comes when your muscles are shaking and you're having a hard time doing it, but you push through anyway. We don't always want to be in a season of that. There's, there's times and places to do the opposite, to not push quite so hard. But this is about challenging being the place of expansion. Challenge is what enables you to grow and get to where you want to go. If you're just constantly running on repeat cycles, there's no place for any deviation from what has always been. And so you want to carve a way through that by challenging yourself and doing things differently. This is a big season for you. Now, I okay, so let me explain this. I am a little bit loose with these four cards. I just kind of threw them down. And I'm leaving it pretty flexible. Like whatever wants to come up for Libra is going to come up for Libra. Queen of Wands. This is that fire that I was talking about. So that's an important piece to harness. Focus on what gives you energy. You guys know I talk about that a lot. Because if you're not paying attention to what depletes you or energizes you, mm, it it's going to make things a little bit more challenging. So if you can get ahead of that by just focusing on where your energy is going, what it's doing, and what makes it, what ramps it up, you're going to be able to see clearly the path of least resistance, whatever obstacle may appear. Make sure you're keeping a close eye on what your energy is doing this month. And then we also have the Nine of Cups, Wishes Fulfilled. Oh my god, I am in love with this card. <laughs> so you're getting what you want. That's a big part of this. But I think if, you, if you'd like, you're welcome to pause the video and make a wish. This is all about fulfillment. Same thing with the Ten of Cups that's sitting right here. This is what this is allowing you to do. But think think about this for a second. If you've been asking for something and it hasn't materialized in the physical, that doesn't mean it's not happening for you. What it means is that some things might be rearranging themselves in the astral or in the material world in order for you to be prepared for that thing you've asked for. 
Because a lot of the time, if your threshold isn't where it needs to be, then some of those manifestations might actually have an issue making their way to you. So just be extra gentle with yourself on that, but continue to take action that challenges you and that you're called to do. And that's where things really get um, fulfilled. And then we also have Three of Cups. It's party time, social hour, having fun with friends, enjoying yourself. This is such a Libra card. It's not even funny. And then what else do we have? We have the sun, vitality. I am just getting that this is a fun month for you. It looks very socially active. It looks enjoyable. It looks like things are really moving in the direction that you want, but but because there is a stipulation on this, you want to make sure you're actively practicing gratitude, even if the manifestation has not arrived yet. So this is going to be a good month to focus on pursuing pleasure and doing things that fill your cup, make you feel good so that this journey is enjoyable for you so that it doesn't make you feel like you're just so that it's not a miserable process. That's when people get into trouble or they feel like things really aren't happening for them is if the journey sucks, right? So you want to make it as enjoyable as possible. And then to clarify these cards, we, okay, 10 of swords. So it's about releasing expectation around how this needs to look and instead pursuing the feelings that work for you in the present moment. Because there's always little pockets, nooks, and crannies where that can be cultivated and created, even if it's only in a few minutes of meditation that you can find that good feeling or that, that feeling that you are really motivated to call into your space. It doesn't matter how you get there. Just find the pocket of time or space where you can shift out of old pictures, old programming, old beliefs. And once you get new data and you can see new things coming in, that's the space in which you're able to release what no longer serves you. Now, if you were new to my channel, um, hello, hello. And I am doing a timeline now, so we're going into quarters of June, so first, second, third, and fourth quarter, wrapping up the month will end right there. But where you're starting in the month of June is the Five of Cups. So focusing on lack is probably going to be a challenge for you in the beginning. This is not a permanent state. It's just something that's coming up. Remember, I was encouraging you to focus on gratitude. This is why. If you're only focusing on what you don't have or not being there yet then you're not actually going to be an energetic match for the thing that you want. So you want to make sure you're practicing gratitude because that is energetic currency, essentially. And so you want to start there and start feeling into what you actually desire. What, what are those feelings and starting from that place. Quarter two, we have strength. So perseverance, personal power, we have some more ego stuff coming up. So I think there might be a few lessons around like humility or starting from zero or, you know, maybe challenging yourself or doing the uncomfortable thing, having the uncomfortable conversation. You have, you have two lions sitting right next to each other. So for you, it's really important that you, you check in with your ego, check in with this lack mentality. What is that really telling you? What is that old wounding? And then be willing to move past that through challenging that belief and taking action anyway. Quarter three, we have the Sun of Cups. This is equivalent to the Knight of Cups in a normal deck. All about emotional vulnerability. That's going to be an important piece. If you're not willing to be vulnerable about how you feel, maybe some struggles that you've had or, or something that you're in the middle of healing, then it's going to be more challenging to shift out of that. So just keep in mind the... Um, the Son of Cups is encouraging you to just own it. Own your feelings. It's completely okay for you to be with yourself as you are. You don't need to be in a different position. You don't need to do things differently right now. You can just own the space that you're in. And then wrapping up the month, we have the Daughter of Wands. So the Page of Wands. I think there's some evaluation happening. Like, 
Are your actions aligned with the direction that you want to go? Are you only taking the action that you think you should be doing? Really keep in mind and start taking inventory of where exactly your energy is going and if those actions and that energy is guiding you towards your goals, dreams, aspirations, desires, or if they're steering you in a different direction. Because the one thing I can tell you is where your energy goes, matter will follow. And that is what's happening here with the Daughter of Wands. So just take inventory by the end of the month because that's going to paint a picture for the oncoming energy, what you individually are manifesting. Now we're going to do a three card pick. So you are welcome to ask a question, notice anything that maybe you want guidance on. You can pick as few or as many cards as you'd like. There's no wrong way to do it. Okay, card number one. We have the Eight of Pentacles. It takes work, just straight up effort. Okay, anything good or anything that needs to be shifted probably comes from doing the internal work or the external work, whatever it is that your particular circumstance is calling for. So make sure you pay attention to that. Most of the time, it's a blend of both. If you're only doing the external work, but you're not taking care of what's going on inside, it's going to be much harder to manifest because of all of those limiting beliefs, frustrations, fears, all of the, the energetic blocks that might be coming up. So keep that in mind. It's, it's about doing both types of work. And then card number two, we have the magician. Focus on more of the energetic creation. So manifestation, mantras, vision boards, journaling, meditation. That's the type of stuff that's going to serve you this month. And it doesn't matter what modality you choose. It's more of like... I don't know, just pick one. Like, what, what do you feel called to do? You could even, like, draw something. Sketch out what you want or doodle whatever it is that you want. That's a powerful form of manifestation as well. So start getting things together for yourself because it's going to be really helpful for you to start mapping this out. I think it's going to materialize a lot faster than you expect. And then card number three, we have the High Priestess. Trust your intuition. That's an important thing to keep in mind this month. This is not a time to doubt yourself or overthink. Instead, you're going to want to go into your body and get the answers from your body because that is going to be a place of true information and your individual truth rather than thoughts, ideas, and beliefs that you've picked up along the way. And the other thing that I want to mention is that fear is not the same thing as intuition, so you're going to want to work on teasing those things apart this month um, as much as you possibly can, and I know that that can also take some work. So just be, be gentle with yourself if you're in the middle of that process. Thank you so much for joining me today, everybody. I always, always, always appreciate you. And it is such an honor being able to do these readings for you. Please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And follow me on Instagram at Onyx Healing. There's been lots of good stuff going on over there. So make sure you check that out. And just so you guys know, I have made a lot of changes to my website and what exactly I'm offering. So I'm doing way more work with people one-on-one -on -one in individual sessions. I have been dialing back the private email tarot spreads that I was doing. I am really taking a step back from those and working with people one-on-one. -on -one. But if you are interested in doing some energetic healing with me and more of the deep healing work, that is absolutely what I'm available for. And don't forget, I still do lots of tarot on Patreon. There's weekly sign-specific readings as well as the monthly love and relationship readings for every sign. They're big readings like this. So all of the links for that are in the description box. I hope you check all of that out if you're interested. There's lots and lots of varieties and options for everybody. And don't forget, I have a podcast out now. The link for that is also in the description box. Please check that out. I hope you guys enjoy it. And 
Until next time, I wish you nothing but the best, everybody. Have a wonderful June, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.